members of the House and then the members of the press call. Uh, this afternoon, we, we call you as a minority. In fact, I have the mandate of the leader of the minority group in Parliament to respond to Honorable Afanyo Makin, who is the Deputy Majority Leader. Our uh, press call members, uh, the media, yesterday, Afanyo Makin came on air to say all sort of things about the Speaker of the Eighth Parliament. And we think that we should not allow all the lies that he peddled to go unresponded. So we are here to respond to the issues that he raised, all the lies that he told the Ghanaians and the world about the Speaker of Parliament. Now, to begin with, the first thing that he said was that the Speaker of Parliament should show leadership. Um, we are surprised that the Deputy Leader, Honorable McCain, should be calling on the Speaker of Parliament to show leadership. We do not see anything that the Speaker of Parliament is doing uh, which shows that he is not showing leadership. In fact, if we want to talk about the Speakers of Parliament and in the immediate past Speaker of Parliament or the Seventh Parliament, as compared to the current Speaker of the Eighth Parliament, if we want to talk about who is showing leadership, it is Honorable Bagwin who is showing leadership. In fact, when Honorable Bagwin returned from his medical trip and where his Deputy Speaker, the first Deputy Speaker, uh, did all sorts of things to overturn the decision of Parliament when the Speaker was uh, around. If Bagwin is somebody who is not showing leadership, he would have reversed all those wrongs that were done by the first Deputy Speaker. But for the fact that he wanted the country to move on, uh, he only said that he is not going to do anything to turn or overturn those uh, decisions. And that shows somebody who is showing leadership. So from Afanyo Makin to say that Bagwin should show leadership, we are surprised and we want to tell the whole world that Bagwin is uh, an experienced former member of parliament. In fact, the only person who has served the parliament of Ghana as a member of parliament for 28 good years. He had all the experience from the first parliament to the seventh parliament. And we are fortunate to have him as a speaker of the eighth parliament where he's putting before the entire country his experience as a, as a member of parliament, a former member of parliament. So everybody should disregard all the comments about Afanyo Makin in relation to the leadership style of Mr. Speaker Honorable Bagwin. Now, he also say that uh, Honorable Bagwin's absence uh, yesterday was a deliberate act to frustrate the business of government. That is a complete lie. It is never true. We all know that Honorable Bagwin just returned from Dubai, where he went to undergo a lot of medical treatment. And he must obey the instructions and directive of, of his doctors, because his life is very important. So if on Friday, before the House should uh, adjourn to Monday, we all agree as a House, leadership of the House agree that Monday, we are coming solely to do the business of e levy So the House was scheduled to start sitting at 10 a.m. on Monday, yesterday. But you also saw what happened. The House ended up starting around 4, 5 p.m. And Mr. Speaker, somebody who is now about to rest enough so that he can regain his uh, health. You cannot put him through all these issues for him to go through all these hazards, wasting and sitting for long. So when the house eventually sat, we all saw the business that they were tabling, completely different from the e-levy that was scheduled for the day. And the speaker cannot stay on beyond certain hours in the chamber. And that is why 
After sitting for some few hours, he called for the first deputy speaker to take the chair for him to go and rest. And when the House was on suspension, reconvening also took a longer time. Mr. Speaker could not stay on at the disadvantage of his health in order to ensure that you, the leaders of the House, leaders of government business, who should table the e-levy, which is very important for you, to put it aside and be doing other things. So for him to say that Honorable Bagwin's absence was deliberate is also not true. So I want to put it out there that Afonio Makin cannot pardon lies about the speaker that he was absent because it was a deliberate act to frustrate the business of the, the House. Now, the issue about presiding <coughs> officers voting. If, I, if you listen to Afonio Makin yesterday, he himself admitted that any member who sits in the chair, either first deputy speaker or uh, any member at all elected from among members of parliament to preside, will lose his what? Original vote. Now, if you read the Constitution and the standing order carefully, you all know that Article 104 talk about the voting in parliament and that the speaker of parliament has neither the original or casting vote. Because the speaker is not a member of parliament, he doesn't have a vote. And he will not have any casting vote as well. If you read Order 211, which is about voting at the committee level, the chair of the committee has no vote. And when there is a tie where we have equal numbers of the eyes and the nose, then the chair will not exercise his casting vote. That is clear. But in the case of the plenary, the speaker who is not a member of parliament doesn't have an original vote or the casting vote. Now, whoever presides or take over the chair of a speaker, he is not the speaker. And for that matter, if that person is a member of parliament, the standing order say, even his original vote, he had to forfeit it. So let alone go into what? Casting vote. So let's understand clearly what the standing order is talking about. A member of parliament has only one vote, which is the original vote. No member of parliament has a casting vote. And for the fact that, as a speaker, you don't have neither the original nor the casting vote, if you ascend to the position as a speaker, the only thing that the standing order should talk about is your original vote, because the casting vote doesn't even come to the picture at all. So he saying, confirming yesterday, that when one of them ascend to the position of a speaker to preside, that person will forfeit his original vote. What did we see yesterday on the floor? He, he was outside press conference saying that the person has no original vote. But when we went to the floor, the speaker, the first deputy speaker, Honorable Joseph Oserosu, now says that he will cast his vote. This is what happened. You all saw it. And this is something that we should not encourage as a country. Now, he was asking what were the reasons for the speaker's absence. As I explained earlier on, the speaker is going through a medical treatment. He needs to obey the instructions of his uh, doctors. He needs to rest after going through that treatment. He cannot, for the fact that he's a speaker, you as the leaders of the majority group cannot put him through this torture where at the end we will, will lose his health will fail. So that is not the position. Now, he also talked about political or uh, partisan design by the minority. We have not designed anything as a minority. Never. All that we are saying is that we are against the E-Levy, and we will vote. We made it known to them. It is not a secret that we are going to vote on the E-Levy. It is now left for them to marshal the numbers, and for them to defeat us on the E-Levy, or we defeat them. So we have never, as a minority group, have any design. Our strategy or our position is that we don't want the E-Levy. It is known to them. It is a fact. 
and we have said all the reasons why we think that the e-levy is something that uh, we should not tolerate. Why are they talking about e-levy? Why are they not talking about going after Ghanaians who earn income through either employment, business, or investment, where they need to pay tax to government? As we speak, about 9 million Ghanaians earn income and who must pay direct tax to government. Effectively, it is only 2.4 million Ghanaians who are paying tax now. About 6.8 million Ghanaians are not paying tax, yet they earn income. It is for the Ministry of Finance to go after these people who earn income so that they pay the appropriate tax to government. Why is Ken Uforiata not choosing to go that way? He want to sit in the comfort of his office, in the air condition, and tax the lazy way your memo, your mumu, your transfer that you made, your bank transfer. For instance, if I take money from my bank account to my <coughs> mobile money account, I'm taxed. This is not something we should encourage because taxing money transfer, it is taxing capital, it is taxing income that has already been taxed. If I go to a restaurant to buy anything and I need to pay tax, I need to pay for that I consume. Already there's a VAT component on that. So if I use my mobile money to pay, I am paying tax on tax. That is a simple explanation. So we are calling on them to rather look at how they can ensure that over 6 million Ghanaians who earn income and are not paying tax are rather tax. Rather than going after little, little money that you and I are transferring to our relatives, to our friends, uh, our parents in order to survive taxing that, which is something that will not work well for us. NDC mean well for Ghanaians. That is why we we'll always go by what Ghanaians want. If MPP also mean well for Ghanaians, then they should listen to what the Ghanaians are saying, that the Mumu tax is not a good one, so that they can drop it. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the media, we call you this afternoon to clear the air that one speaker is showing leadership. There's nowhere speaker will not show leadership. And we do not expect Afanyo Makin to, do, uh, to go that line by saying that speaker is not showing leadership. We also say that speakers absent yesterday is on, on half ground not anything deliberate to frustrate the business of the House. We're also saying that any deputy speaker or member of parliament who are sent to the position of a speaker will lose his original or feed his original vote. And for that matter, Honorable Fed Deputy Speaker yesterday had no right to say he was going to cast vote. And then also, the reasons for the speaker's absence yesterday again, is on her ground. So these are the reasons why we call you this afternoon to send a message to Ghanaians that we as NDC are against the e-levy. We are not in favor of taxing capital. We are not in favor of taxing money that you and I have already been taxed. It's going to amount to double taxation. You're going to your taxing transfers it is not an income, and therefore, don't go that way. Rather, we are offering the Ministry of Finance the opportunity to go after those over 6 million Ghanaian who earn income and are not paying taxes to tax them so that government can rake in more revenue to take care of the needs of this country. We thank you very much so, for your coming. Yes. Just two quick questions. Mm -hmm. Regarding today's session, have the minority leader just heard from the yeah, we, we have from the Speaker of Parliament. The Speaker was on the way coming. Uh, so, in fact, there was even a, a request from him to delay the process. But looking at the, the events, what was happening, we thought that in order not to delay the process, probably for the majority side to change their mind again, they should come and preside an agenda house. So, Speaker was prepared to come uh, to the house uh, this morning. Yes, so we heard from him. Regarding uh, the e levy, mm. now uh, Parliament has a joint sitting, yeah. we are recent. What, 
what plan is your side uh, putting together when it comes back? When we start it. Well, we, I said, we said time and again that we are against the e levy. And let's give you some historical background, probably to what happened introduction of taxes in Ghana. In 1995, when the President Rawlings introduced the VAT in this country, it was a current president, Nana Akufuado, who led a demonstration, that Kumi Preku demonstration, against the introduction of VAT. Ghanaians didn't want VAT, so what President Rawlings did was to withdraw the VAT, went for further consultation, reduced the rates, and it was accepted when it was reintroduced. We want this government to listen, especially the president who was the person against the reduction of value added tax. He's not introducing tax, and Ghanaians don't want it. Can he also listen to Ghanaian? Or he has changed from his posture then, when he was leading Ghanaians against the introduction of VATS. Now he thinks that he can force e levy on the truth of Ghanaians. So if it is reintroduced in um, January, not even introduced because it has not been withdrawn, if no consultation has gone on and it remains the same, don't expect anything different from the minority. We will still hold our position opposing it. But if there had been consultation where they also listen to what Ghanaians are saying and make some changes, probably we will look at what changes they are making and we will take a decision. So now so let's talk about what happened yesterday. Yeah. The speaker, you talked about the fact that his absence was because of health reasons. Yeah. The report from the Finance Committee were told was not ready. Yeah. Even in the plenary, yeah. the speaker demanded the production of the report, and he was told it was not ready. Didn't we envisage that because matters dragged at the committee level, they had to vote on clauses <coughs> and subsequently voting on as to whether it must be taken under certificate of urgency or was the what, what actually delayed the production of the report? Or you think it's deliberate that the report was delayed? For me, for me, uh, I would say it's a deliberate from the part of the majority because they are leaders of government business. We've been holding meetings even weekends, holidays. I've been the chairman of finance committee for eight years, don't forget, from 2009 to January 2017. And have worked, nothing of this sort ever happened. Now, if Friday, before the House went on um, adjournment, and the decision was that Monday was going to be made solely for e-levy, and the committee was supposed to meet, why didn't the committee meet on Saturday to work on this, get the report ready, so that the Monday, the 10 a.m. that we have agreed on, by the time the House sits on 10, the report is ready. Why didn't we do that? So it depends on the leadership of the majority side. Who should take all these decisions? They have not done that. And yet, when we came on Monday, you have to postpone the sitting from 10 to 2. Even at that 2, we did not sit. And you want the speaker who is treating his health to keep long here waiting for all this work. No, it's, it, it's not good. And eventually, when the House even sat, he was prepared. He, he came to start the sitting. You were introducing different uh, business. You were introducing different business, simply because you didn't have your numbers. So you were delaying the process to get all your numbers ready before you take the decision. I think that we should be fair to each other. No speaker is aware. If I he even said that we should delay so that he come to agenda the house. So he's aware that the house is going to be agenda Sinidia. But because as I said Looking at the atmosphere at that time, if we do not take certain decisions or actions immediately, you know these are our <coughs> brothers from the other side. They can change their mind at any, any, any time. That is why we allow the first deputy speaker to come and preside and agenda house in the day. So the speaker is aware. Good, good one. Peter, like you said, looking at the moon in the house today, are we likely to 
to see United Parliament next year for you because the number is the same, the position is the same. The reason why Ghanaians voted for a hung parliament is for us to have consensus. Not to, to be fighting, for us to have consensus. And in having consensus, it's, it involves what? Negotiation. But if one side also say that, you know, we are not introducing that business. It is the government that has introduced that business. And we said, no, we are against it. Government should make some concessions. Why are they insisting that after the E levy, 1.75%, nothing less, nothing more? And it's like E levy is not their savior. In fact, they are going to do Christmas with E levy. <laughs> this Christmas is also going to be called E levy Christmas. Why is it so? They think that without E levy, government cannot survive. Government has survived all these years without this new tax. Why are they saying that? There is one aspect you should also look at. You are going to spend $137 billion, and if you, you, you pay the arrears of 1.9 and then pay, pay the uh, um, amortization of $7.9 billion, a total of $145 billion expenditure in the year 2022. And you are raising $100 billion, $100.5 billion and you think that it is only that 6.9 billion that is going to save you as a country, we have all the time governed this country without e -levy. The effort that we should make as a country is to target the income and S and pay. One of the principles of taxation is what? The more you earn, the higher the tax you pay. There are people, about 300,000 Ghanaians are in the upper class of income. Are they paying taxes? Can Oforia tax you focus on that rather than trying to sit in the comfort of his chair in the office and say that at the end of the day, without doing anything, in revenue will come from your transfer that you're making to your parents back in the village. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, so 